So Camille and I have been trying to get a handle for a while on the science engagement process. And uh, for those of you who've tried to um, lead scientists to data and then make them think, uh, it's a lot of work. Um, so um, I just threw a few notes together. Um, being an evangelist is very difficult. You've probably run into people who are evangelists, and uh, you have to be very, very good at it. Larry Smar is an evangelist, of course, of, of fabulous um, capabilities, and that's the reason why we're here, is because he actually understands all of these scientific fields, or at least the trends in them, and uh, reads voraciously, and uh, actually pays attention to conferences he goes to, and all sorts of things that are largely beyond my capability. So. Um, the way that we designed the PRP was to try to get a lot of people engaged in it, uh, starting with the network engineers, the people they report to, but then on the other side, the scientists and the people that they report to in the loose way that academics actually report up the chain. It turns out in most universities, they don't actually meet until the president's office or the chancellor's office, um, and uh, most scientists have no better idea about how networking works than they do about how the plumbing works on campus. And, and they don't want to know either. So we've been trying to socialize that by getting people together and actually introducing the network engineers and the research facing uh, IT people to the uh, people who need it. Uh, this is a long process, fortunately. We have a five-year um, project going on. One of the ways to do this is to have workshops. If you talk to me very long, you'll find out that workshops is my answer to everything. And it, well, it's not Fiona boxes, right? So workshops are Fiona boxes. And um, so we're doing, we do things like we do add-ons to Scenic, and Camille's been organizing those. The next one is March 20th. It happens to be here, or actually across the street at an even more uh, lovely location, the Estancia. Um, and then we just heard about the, um, Scott is doing the Big Data and Earth Sciences workshop here, May 31st to June 2nd. We've got a few in planning, a cryo EM one, a machine learning one, and an HP REN one. We have participant support funding in our grant for several of these a year, both here and at Berkeley. Um, and we have money being asked for. Participant support funding pays for people to come from other places to come to your workshop. It does not pay for your expenses at the workshop or your, your students to get fed at the workshop, but it does pay for other students to get fed at the workshop from other places. So there has to be um, coming from somewhere else involved. Um, and um, the strategy that I've taken is uh, very much a page out of my own life is that when I started getting involved in uh, academia, um, I got involved in conferences and doing workshops, and sooner or later I was running SIGGRAPH. And then um, this is one of the things that attracted Larry Smart to me, is that he wanted to show things at SIGGRAPH. And so as a young person, and I wasn't young by the time I met Larry, but um, at the, and that was 30 years ago, right? So as a young person, I met all the top people in the field, and some of them were fellow students, uh, uh, the guy who runs Adobe, the guy who runs Pixar, they were all students in the same generation at these workshops. So I'm trying to pitch to young people like Scott and, um, um, and uh, uh, in, in these various fields that this is a great way to meet people. Bring them in, give them a place, give them a location to shine, to talk to each other. You do the work and then they'll know you. Now, we have this weekly PRP network engineer call, uh, and there's 60 people who were signed up. Um, about a dozen to 15 usually call in, but they all get the notes. And so these are people from all over the place. We've also created other documents, and you can't, you could read it if you want. But we built these CIO matrix, matrices to communicate to the CIOs of these campuses what's going on in their campuses, because frankly, by and large, they don't know, at least not comprehensively because they report to different people than the faculty do. So there's one for Riverside, Berkeley, we've got them for all the campuses, basically, all the 20 campuses. And uh, that is the end of my part of it. Again, it's a trick of trying to get people together in any way you can get them to do it. 
Thank you. So Tom and I make a good uh, tag team here. And I just want to give a little bit more background. Um, I, I was thinking about the maps in our heads. And I think Tom and others here clearly have very uh, detailed and, and um, useful maps of the networking infrastructure throughout, the, throughout California and throughout Pacific the Pacific region. The, the map in my head has more to do about the institutional relationships. And I want to just talk for a minute about that because I think that could p potentially be a key to science engagement, which is sort of the other half of what's going to make this whole platform successful. And I feel like as much as the networking side has really been quite successful and is ramping up and has lots of momentum and, and participants, I feel like the science engagement side, we haven't quite cracked that nut yet, except for people like Frank, who have both sides, you know, in one embodied in one person. Um, so I am deputy director at Citrus, which uh, some of you might know is a UC wide institution like Cal IT2. Um, but in the acronym of Citrus, sorry to explain the acronym, is uh, the Center for IT Research in the Interest of Society. And so I feel like it's that interest of society piece that we can do a better job of articulating and that can really help to tell the science engagement story. Because we need to get faculty members on board, we need to get postdocs on board, we need to get um, you know, young research IT staff on board to help us really realize the power of what the PRP can do. So thinking about the various institutions, as I mentioned, I was thinking about institutional maps. So you have the University of California, you have all of the institutions that are affiliated with the Pacific Research Platform. Um, and then within those, how are they populated? Um, we have these various groups, and I think that the science engagement side uh, can do a better job if we're able to bring those together and really to, to articulate these use cases like weather data, like genomic data, like VR and other kinds of applications. So these workshops are a great place to really highlight those opportunities and to try to push the edges of those. But it's really going to take this kind of person to person contact to be for the, the scientists who already have their workflows, you know, more or less worked out. And even if it takes them 20 days, well, you know, at least they they get it there and they know <laughs> what to expect. But the PRP can really help to speed that up by an order of magnitude, but we need to have evangelists more than just Larry um, who can go out and, and talk with them. So that's really the population that we're trying to build with the science engagement piece as well. And I have to say it's been quite challenging. Um, we started this grant a year and a half ago or so, and at that time we had funds in there to hire science engagement specialists. And we started recruiting then, writing job descriptions. And uh, first we had imagined it as a postdoc position and interviewed a couple people. Those fell through for various reasons. So then we go back and go to a research specialist type position. Um, so we're still kind of working to ramp up that side of it. And maybe that's fine because you know we've had certainly a plenty of work to do to get um, all the Fiona boxes on board and to monitor the performance and all of that. So now that that's really humming, um, now we have a, a really fine-tuned machine for these uh, scientists to plug into. But my pitch to you, I guess, would be to reach out to the, the scientists on your campus to you know help me also um, as we're trying to build this out throughout the Pacific uh, region through these institutions that we all belong to because it's difficult. I think you know these networking problems certainly are are tough, and but we have all this expertise here to to go about solving them. It's more sort of the social engineering side that I think we need some help with. Um, so I appreciate any of your suggestions as to how we can do a better job on that. So there's really. Um Again, it's really difficult. Part of the problem is there aren't any metrics. I mean, how do you um, how do you say you're being successful in this area? How does it? It's when the emails stop. I mean, pretty much <laughs> you get things rolling, and it's like networking. You get things rolling, and it's a gazillion emails until it works, and then you never hear from anybody again, right? It's gone. They're done with you. You know, it's not like they send out reports. So uh, that's a problem, and um, but. Again, the important thing is that in the campuses and the way we structured it where the people who support research IT, unless they specifically work for them, like Frank has people who work for him directly, you know, don't really interact that much. Uh, until a few years ago, this campus had, in its thousand IT professionals had nobody that was actually facing faculty research. Nobody. Now there's a few people. We built that up and it's being successful. 
but how, you know, how do you start it? And then the thing that I see that really changes, this is extremely important, is that if you ask any faculty member what they think of the campus, you know, IT infrastructure, whatever, they'll probably say something like, those guys, you know, those guys, I can't get anything out of them, you know, they're not, yeah, you know, right? But you actually introduce people and they know who to call. And then all of a sudden, they pick up the phone and they say, or email and say, I got a problem and the problem gets fixed or there's an answer for a workaround or a discussion about it or something that never would have happened before. Meanwhile, believe me, the people on the other side think the researchers are jerks too. So it, what you gotta do is get people together so they realize that they're not jerks and that, or maybe they are, but at least they're the same kind of jerk <laughs> and that they can, they have some common ground and can work together. So that's the, my pitch. And let's talk about it some more because we need help. Mm -hmm.